Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Just a little bit of commentary. Um, apparently, some very bold plaintiffs were able to obtain a ruling that gives college athletes the opportunity to unionize. I'm all for it. In the next few days, you're going to hear a lot of people claim that the deal that college athletes get right now is so good. It's so perfect that anything else would be inferior. That the athletes are better off with the current deal than they would be with anything else. Right under the current deal, of course, they get an education, four years of one, but, of course, they don't get paid for their athletic endeavors. Well, my point is simply this, and folks need to realize I'm a libertarian. If the current deal is so good, well, why do you need rules to limit the opportunity for athletes to negotiate a different deal? Right? Shouldn't the current deal then win out in the marketplace if it's that good? If you know in your heart that this current deal wouldn't be the one the athletes themselves would pick as a group, then you know the deal's not that good because the people involved in the transaction want something else. Right? That's the first point. The second point is simply imagine being in a workplace where you find out that everyone's getting the same salary and of course that salary is zero right how long would you last in that workplace if you feel that somebody is making not millions but billions of dollars off of your work you know the point is we live in a free society not a prison right someone is making billions of dollars it would be different very different if no one was making any money if the coach was making minimum wage but understand the way college basketball and college football are the coaches are making six and seven figures at some of these programs. How much is Nick Saban making in Alabama? Right? Didn't the University of Texas just sign Charlie Strong to something like five million dollars annually? With six and seven figure checks being handed out annually to specific employees in these sports. And why are we even calling it a sport? It should be viewed as a business. Then why can't the athletes get a piece of the pie they themselves are baking? Right? It's ludicrous. Right? Maybe there are athletes out there who would be willing to play for free if no one was getting paid. But people are getting paid and they're getting paid a lot of money. Right? These advertisers aren't paying the networks that have purchased the NCAA packages in virtual dollars. They're paying in real dollars. Share that money with the athlete. Also, isn't there a lot of age bias here? The last time I checked, you only had to be 18 to vote in the United States. 18. Right? You could be 18 and serve in the U.S. military. But you're telling me that you can't be 18 and get paid for playing college football or pro football? Also, for those who say, hey, these kids are making a choice by signing up for this program. Okay, great. Give the kids an opportunity to negotiate what they sign up for. If LeBron James or Kevin Durant were coming out of high school right now, don't you think many colleges would want them to play college basketball for their teams? Don't you think there'd be a competitive 
bidding process where a LeBron or a Kevin Durant might be able to say to the university, you know, while I attend your university, right, I don't want to be eating beans and rice every night. I'm from a background where, hypothetically speaking, I was raised by a single mom. Let's say you're LeBron James. You're raised by a single mom, right? You never had a lot of money. You're on some campus where most of the kids are actually paying full tuition, right? Is it that much of a reach knowing that you're going to bring in hundreds, if not millions of dollars to that university? to say, look, give me a piece of that pie so I can actually have more than two pair of shoes, right? So I could actually take my college girlfriend to the movies. So I could actually, on occasion, leave this meal table, right? This athletic meal table that they give athletes and actually go to a local restaurant, one where perhaps they're fans of the school and might even have my jersey on the wall. And so I don't know why everyone's so afraid of the free market in this context. Doesn't the free market work in other contexts? Just imagine if they were out there trying to use price controls to tell you exactly how much you could pay for that burger, how much you could pay for that milkshake. <laughs> you know what? I don't even see NCAA price controls when it comes to how much customers pay for tickets to their events. Right? So the whole thing to me is ridiculous. Let's throw this open to a free market. And for those critics who want to say, hey, the kids will end up paying some of the freight if it's a free market, the university won't absorb that bill. Let's stop kidding ourselves. You're really going to try to recruit the kind of talent that the University of Alabama recruits every year to play football. And then you're going to tell the person you're recruiting, the person that the coach has traveled hundreds of miles to be in that kid's living room, to make a sales presentation to that family. You're telling me you're going to say to some all-American kid, some all-American high school prospect, if you come here, you're going to have to pay us. You're going to have to assume the risk. Good luck with that. Let's just say I pay to watch Denzel Washington movies. Denzel Washington doesn't pay me for the privilege to be in movies for my entertainment. Right? That's not the economic reality. Understand, we're watching the NCAA college basketball tournament because these kids are the elite college basketball players on the elite college basketball teams in the country. Let's stop kidding ourselves. And if athletic programs are not financially viable without forcing labor to work at you know, no pay except for a scholarship, then I would question whether those schools should even have programs, right? Do we want to endorse a program with that level of exploitation? I would hope not. Unfortunately, we have for decades. I'm very glad to see that changing. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Let's make this a robust discussion. I understand that many of you support the current system, right? The idea is that, you know, these athletes should be grateful for being able to get an education as if a Kobe Bryant, a Kevin Garnett, a LeBron James, none of whom attended a day of college before they got drafted, couldn't have then turned around after realizing their lifelong dream of getting a pro basketball contract and then gone back to school, paid for an education, and still had significant profits. 
right? In the real world, that would be called a smart decision, right? In this virtual world of athletes supposedly having to be grateful for getting crumbs at the table, right? I'm supposed to believe that the shrewd move for Kevin Garnett <laughs> would have been to go to school, get paid nothing, risk everything, right? If he turns out to not be that good, there's no pro contract at the end of the rainbow. If he blows out a knee and can't play basketball again, there's no pro contract, right? That's supposed to be the better economic decision than signing the contract when you're a hyped high school player and then having the option of being able to pay your own college tuition without NCAA oversight. I think it's an easy call. I think anyone who studies economics would figure out that the free market is preferable to this kind of forced NCAA plantation system. And let's be real, that's what it's been. That's my take. Let me hear yours. I hope you publish it for the world here in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.